Paul Fisher, um, you have outdone yourself tonight. Did you know that? Well, I'm not done yet. Yeah. I heard about Steve's work about a year ago from an art collector, and I'd never heard of him in the music world. I, I'm into art and I love music, but I don't really pay attention to anybody's name, so I didn't, I never knew about that part or didn't pay much attention to it. But I saw the work, and what I'm known for as a dealer, you know, early on was my association with Dale Chihuly, and I don't really think of Chihuly so much as a glass artist, but really as more of an abstract expressionist sculptor. And that is where I'm most attracted is abstraction and abstract expressionism. But also, I look for people who are doing something really clever, something inventive, someone who's taking the, the visual language and going somewhere that nobody else has gone before. And that could be intellectually, and it could also be the craftsmanship of the work. And when I saw Steve's work, I could tell that you know, this is highly considered. Now, you don't always see that with everything. A lot of times, abstract expressionism is like, you know, through the, the movement and all that. So I saw that in his work, but the, I realized that every single part of this was highly considered, every part of it, and how balanced it was. And art, if you're into it, you can look at it and you can see things. You can see if it has a foundation, if it has a structure, if it has a background. We're, we've got both Paul Fisher and, and Steve Longo um, with us, and you, and you brought out these CDs here. Um, now you, you were telling me that the, 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 mus the artwork is relaxation from the music, or the music is relaxes you from the art, which is it? Well, well today, it's the music relaxes me from the art. Um, yeah, that's, I, I've been a musician my whole life, and um, the two seem to go hand in hand. I'm not very relaxed tonight. Paul has <laughs> set me up an amazing display, an amazing showing. At, uh, at the Paul Fisher Gallery, and I, I'm ecstatic. All right, some some of your work adapts itself well to uh, CD covers, um, but but you know it, it's a combination for you. One, I mean, they're both equal in your mind, the, the art and the music. Yeah. Well, I I think I've been doing the music professionally longer, and it if if I had to pick a first love, that would you know it, that's what I do, and that's what I believe I was put in this world to do, but the art occupies such a great space in my life that it's overtaking the other part. So there, it's kind of dual personalities. Yeah, it's great. It's an evolution. You can tell something has a real solid foundation, and if it's saying something that no one else has said before or saying it better. And when I saw his work, I totally got that. And I saw so much structure and connection of each work to the next, even though you know, we look around, everything looks like a completely separate thing. But I would know in a heartbeat if you put in 20 other colorful things on the wall in between, you could look at these and go, that's his, that's his, that's not, that is. So that unique signature is really important to me to see. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now real estate team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well, and we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. Steve Longo is exhibiting at the Paul Fisher Gallery, and uh, I, w I was I was looking at your bio, and I I mean there was just too much, too much. You you have had a busy life, haven't I you? I have been yeah engaged for the past several years. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. mm -hmm. The many things you do because you you're both visual and auditory. What would you call that? I guess that? audio. Yeah, yeah. music yeah. qualifies as uh, audio. Yeah. Do you think you think your music background influences your visual art? Without question, because I, I think uh, my, I'm a drummer by trade, so I, it's about rhythm for me. Right. And music is a very flowing art form, and I, you know, I like to believe I carried some of that rhythm over to my art. And which, that's, which came first, the music or the art? They came at the same time. Yeah. They really came at the same time. Uh, professionally, the music I, I've been a pro since I'm 13, so I've been touring, you know, for a long time. Uh, and the art I've been doing, I, but the art only became public, I only started showing 
maybe five or six, six, maybe seven years ago. And the response was incredible. I would have never, I've been doing it for 30 years, but I did it to sort of relax after recording sessions and that type of thing. Well, when you were, when you were, I know you've been with a lot of different bands and, and, and touring and things, that makes, it's kind of hard to concentrate on artwork when you're on the road. Right, and that's not, you know, this is usually the byproduct of me being in the studio, my recording studio. I was, I'll, I'll come out and I'll be just so wound up, and this is how I, used to relax. Now it seems to be making me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, now, you say you, you got started when you were 13 in music yeah. and, and art at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got started as a pro at 13. That's when I started touring, believe it or not. Um, but music and art have been a part of my life ever since I can remember. Growing up, my brother used to doodle, so I got the bug from him, and I, I love it. I love visual art, I love color, as you can see, and uh, it's, it's been a great journey. How do people react to your work? Um, like they're just starting to peak. <laughs> like, like they did when they were back in college, how about that? Yeah. They, I mean, people are when I, when I used to do uh, the shows, you know, when I'd go to the art shows, people would come and say, oh, I feel like I'm in my dorm room. Yeah. So I imagine that uh, some of the psychedelia okay. of my so, new... So what influenced you? Artistically? Just the joy of doing it, honestly. I mean, I love color. I have always loved color. I love art. And I found a medium that works for me, and, and they're like... They're kind of like visual songs, and composing them is very similar to composing music. It, it starts and it, it begins a journey, and I just somehow know when it's over, if you know what I mean. I know when I'm finished. It's a, it's a, it's a very, almost a channeling experience for me, but I, I just love doing it, I really do. You, you've also done some composing for, for motion pictures, movies? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, that's, well, that's what I'm doing now, sort of on the side of things is, yeah, I, I, did, um, I did some TV shows and films back in the 90s and the 80s. Um, when I was working with John Entwistle from The Who, we scored a TV show called Vampires. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know what, I've, I've tried to keep myself busy with things I love to do. Well, I was thinking that maybe you've, you're devoting more time to your art because you've settled down a little bit, but you, you haven't settled down? No, not at all. No children. Wife, a very, a very active wife, great dog, no children. I won't settle down until they're shoveling dirt on me. Uh, talk a little more about the, the artwork. I just noticed the one over my right, over oh, my yeah. shoulder oh, over yeah. there. Uh, and, um, but, but uh, it's all, it is all pattern and rhythm, and it all seems yes. to have a, a, a movement. I mean, it, it seems to be moving, even though it's on canvas. Well, yes, and, and, and that's really what I'm, what I'm looking for is that, that three-dimensional thing that sort of pulls you in, that makes you feel the rhythm of the piece. So the, this was actually an album cover that I did, um, but still, the, it's the circular... So, so drumming is very circular, martial arts is very circular, life is very circular. Are you into martial arts also? I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm not busy yeah, enough. It's only 24 hours in a day. That's true, that's yeah. true. But I've had a lot of good days. So, yeah. um, But it, it, like I said, it's very circular and, and, and revolving. And, and um, it's, that's, what, that's what it is, is the flow. It's about, it's about the flow and the musicality of the, of the pieces. Victims of mesothelioma and their loved ones may be entitled to receive a cash reward from over 18 billion in asbestos trust funds now available. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma, call the number on your screen now. Even if a loved one has passed due to mesothelioma, you may still be entitled to a cash reward. Time is limited. Call now. Please call 800-970-0240. We are looking at the work of Steve Longo uh, here at the Paul Fisher um, Art Gallery, and there is a well-known critic in the room. So let's find out what he thinks of this. Um, this this stuff is pretty incredible, isn't it? Oh yeah, there. I mean, you know, what's not to like? Uh, 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 he has got a, a literal uh, toss salad of ingredients, uh, beautiful visual ingredients. 
that have to do with color and form. And there's a mystery to the work. I was just uh, examining them uh, just a bit ago. Uh, apparently, he starts out on a computer using a stylus uh, and uh, without a photograph, m manipulates these uh, forms until he's happy with them. And then he has them printed on canvas. I think there's another thing. They have a great three-dimensional uh, illusionary quality to them that amplifies the basic aesthetics of what this guy is doing, which is kind of a celebration of color and form all mixed together, you know? You throw the, all these things in a blender and basically this is what comes out. With a lot of forethought, I think there's a, there's a great uh, plan uh, with his compositions. Uh, I'm particularly uh, uh, curious about this work uh, because it's one of the more unusual uh, pieces that I've seen done on a computer. And uh, where many of this type of uh, uh, exploration fails miserably, with many artists, uh, this is really uh, among the best I've seen. Um, and um, you can take any little spot on this painting and find something that is arresting and eccentric and appealing. And I think that's why this show has turned out to be uh, such a popular uh, venue, especially on a day where we had a tornado, we've got bad <laughs> rains, and they still pack the house here. So. It's great, but I wanted to come out and see what's going on, and I really do admire this work. Thanks for asking. Uh, Bruce Helander, you are a, um, a working artist yourself. You are also a, an author, a writer. Do you consider yourself to be an art critic or an art promoter? I think more of an art critic. I mean, I, I, um, it's something I enjoy. Yeah. I had uh, a really an extraordinary experience this afternoon. As a matter of fact, I interviewed uh, Bernie Taplin, who is uh, Elton John's lyricist, uh, and he's a painter. He's going to show at Wynwood uh, coming up. Uh, and um, um, those are the kinds of opportunities that uh, make you happy that you're a critic, because as an artist, you're looking through lenses that are different than most critics. You know, if you're, uh, if you're a, a radio announcer for a football game, it helps to know what it's like to catch the ball. So in the art world, uh, I supplement the activity uh, that I do with being an art critic. I do a lot of writing for the Huffington Post uh, because it sh helps sharpen your own vision uh, and you end up getting a much better perspective and making a lot of discoveries that are personally enjoyable, like this great painter, yeah. And, and it is all about, um, it's all about the patterns and the, the I, I see so much movement within these pieces of, of art. Oh, well, there's a great deal of movement. now. Uh, you know, let's be sure, th there is nothing narrative about this work at all. The only close narrative brush is actually seeing a sphere or a circle. So these don't tell any stories. They're really kind of a celebration of color and composition. And in some of them, I mean, you know, a couple of pieces on the wall there, they're hard to believe that they are not actually right. three-dimensional. Yeah. So uh, I think he's got a, a, a great show here and it looks like he's got a great future to me. Listen up, America. This is an important medical alert for anyone suffering from back or knee pain. If you or a loved one suffers from back or knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, you can qualify for a pain-relieving back or knee brace at little or no cost to you. Stop living in pain because the brace you need is too costly. Call Listen Up America right now for more details. The call is free and there's no obligation. Please call 800-299-6799. This is an incredibly exciting evening, uh, and I'm with um, I'm with the artist Takashi, and and with um, with Chika. Um, you're going to do a little bit of interpreting for me, yes? Oh yes. What what made Takashi ever think of doing this kind of work? So, what made Takashi ever think of doing this kind of he wanted to show his identity as, as an artist and he always looking for um, some theme from Japanese old traditional paintings or something and ha somehow um, he met those uh, animals we call the yokai which is a kind of spirit and uh, uh, he met those spirit which is kind of you know, animal spirit which exists for 
everything for everywhere from long time ago. I mean, we believe so. And he wanted to bring them into the modern life, and that became his theme as a, you know, to introduce Japanese history too. You know, we all Japanese children is familiar with this story because we have so many story, old story with those. I mean, uh, what did what did you say? Like uh, this spirit. So, and also he wanted to express that, you know, oh, they are living for a long time, um, around 400 years, so we have to, you know, respect old tools, old items which exist long time ago. We respect old stuff, which, you know, old shoes, old clothing, anything old. So he wanted to uh, tell people that, you know, we should respect everything that exists in so, this world. So are, are each of these uh, identifiable in folklore like would you would a person know recognize them yes yeah, some yes yeah, some yokais are really popular in Japan okay. already and some some kids knows about maybe no parable where is, where is he no parable is there on the McDonald's uh -huh. he's hiding and it's every Japanese know that word and know that animal so but but why why the mix with m very modern References to, in particular, commercial products. なぜ there are so many artists over years and years, they draw with the same theme, like they draw so many these yokai paintings on their you know, picture scroll, which is exists like since 400 years ago in Japan. So as, as one of the artists, he also wanted to draw yokai, yokai on, in the modern life. Because he lives in this time, and you know, he wanted to through all times. Oh yes, it's, yeah. and also he wanted to say they are exist even the modern life. Right. So it's a kind of huge juxtapose. Do you know how much fun, how how happy, how how delightful these works are? Ah, oh, thank you very much. Ah, kito kono yokai tachi mo ano konkai America ni hajimete kite. Thank you for saying that. So maybe, yes, maybe those or your guys, they're also happy about it. What's next? What, what is next for him? もう今これ見てるだけでも本当にディテールはすごいし、いろんなことが落ちてるのがわかります。ところでこの先のあなたのやりたい方向性っていうのはどういうものですか？えっとまず私の制作方法っていうのはあのアーティスト兼えっと Yes, he is. A, he recognizes himself as a contemporary artist, but at the same time, he also thinks it's uh, he is a craftsman as well. So, as a craftsmanship, he always just you know keep drawing those yokai just true true by truth for himself true, with his truth. せっかくアメリカに来れたんでぜひアメリカマイアミの風景も妖怪と一緒に絵で再現したいと思ってますそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう
Um, I'm going to predict that this guy is going to be an international star right here, right now. He has all of the facility. Um, uh, among other things, uh, the curiosity behind the story of how these are put together is really quite extraordinary. In Japan, uh, there is a tradition of um, uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, respect of household objects. They can be pots and pans or things that hang around, and eventually, uh, in, in terms of mythological uh, uh, perspective, they have a certain spirit to them uh, that's, uh, that's celebrated. So, uh, many, many hundreds of years ago, they had scrolls that would be narrative depictions of uh, life and spirits in Japan. These are a refreshing new revival of this great uh, narrative storytelling where uh, these uh, great objects uh, that are here uh, are playing games with the picture um, and instead of using uh, uh, 16th century imagery, uh, they're using imagery uh, that is today, like a Starbucks or uh, a gas station or a shell station or so on. So the notion is that surrounding all of these works are these great uh, 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 animated uh, uh, figurative cartoons uh, that are uh, handsomely placed in something that normally is an everyday experience. And that's what makes these so exciting, because if you can juxtapose the notion that you were taking something that is hard to believe could be turned into art, like a truck carrying gas, sure. but he has all of these wonderful little innuendos, uh, these little uh, secrets, combined with the fact that uh, Japanese calligraphy is among the most beautiful aesthetic uh, lettering in the world, uh, and so these things are accented uh, with uh, these uh, beautiful uh, calligraphic uh, scratches. I think the other thing is that uh, when an artist who is this talented uh, comes from a foreign country um, uh, like Japan, uh, that the novelty of these works is amplified because it's a different language and it has a kind of um, interesting uh, twist to it because you're seeing something that's very contemporary but at the same time you see something that's traditional and at the same time you're finding that the 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 illustrator is doing something that almost is impossible in a way they're like the early comic strips uh, for the Sunday papers where they would uh, take on a theme and oftentimes as comics do they are humorous this is a very serious fun uh, project and uh, there is going to be a lot heard about this guy. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. What, what I love is that there are so many references that are familiar to American audiences. Yeah, yeah. I think that it is the familiarity. It's like going on a, 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 a tour uh, on a cruise uh, through countries yeah. where you look at work that is so uh, well articulated. I think that's the other thing is when you look carefully, these works are magnificently refined with gold leaf. Uh, he has a perfect essence of the way he forms his work. Uh, he studied apparently in Kyoto where uh, craft is a, a great tradition uh, and uh, where he uh, apparently uh, discovered uh, this uh, tradition of putting these objects around and uh, causing mischief. So if he keeps that mischief up, he's going in the right direction. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What's on your website? Video is now essential to your brand, and Buzz TV can help your business website stand out. Buzz TV is a full-service video production company creating video to highlight what you do best with service and product news and demos, video for the web, YouTube, Facebook, broadcast TV, and social media sharing. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com today. We look forward to hearing from you. What's involved in putting together a show like this? You know, I have a lot less artists than I used to, and I've really narrowed down in the last year or two to just a small handful of artists that are really unique, that are going places, 
that are cool to work with, that's important too. Now I need somebody who's a totally sharp professional, not someone who says, oh, I'm a wild art, no. I want someone who's a professional that knows their art history, that can get their work there on time, that's pleasant and fun to work with. So what does it take to put a show together like this? I have to really believe in the artist, and then, and, and then just a lot of work. <laughs> You are in a room with, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to say it's contrasting, because I think both exhibits this evening are actually complement each other, both with a very modern touch. Well, yes, and uh, Takashi's work, uh, when, when Paul told me that we were going to be roommates, so to speak, I was thrilled because his, first of all, you cannot overlook the talent in his work. He is such a gifted artist on so many levels it's remarkable so to show with someone that that original that unique and that talented is is a thrill and the fact that the juxtaposition between my work and his isn't as drastic as everybody might think it's uh I, i'm looking at the room and i and i see these pieces living very well together yep. Yep. it's amazing how uh, different different works can complement each other even though stylistically they may be totally different? Oh, I, yeah, stylistically they're, you know, worlds apart. At the same time, they work in the same room, and I knew they would. I knew it would be just a great balance. What's in store for the rest of this season? Uh, I've got a couple more exhibitions coming up. This one is like the exhibition of the season in many ways because it's during Art Palm Beach. So this is when everybody is attracted to Palm Beach. It's, it's, so you know, everything is, is timed and planned to the, to, to the Palm Beach season. As, as, a, um, uh, as an art exhibitor, what motivates you? Why do you do this? Well, a lot of it's for the money. I mean, what, you know, it's my job. Uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of things I could do that would probably make me more money. <laughs> um, well, I, yeah, I'm just attracted to it. Part of it is, if I had a lot of money, I would just want to be surrounded by this stuff anyway. So now I'm not only surrounded by it, but I'm engaged. Not, it puts the food on my table. It puts the brainstorms in my, in my mind at 3 in the morning. So I want to be surrounded by this work. I want to be stimulated by it. I want to learn from it. I want to explore it. Takashi's really young. His first show was a sellout in Tokyo. He got amazing press this show I'm going to sell it out and even though Takashi's real young and Steve is you know probably almost, oh, almost 50 <laughs> he, he you know but he's still an early career artist and that's the mo you know that's the time that I think is most exciting as a dealer as a curator to get on board and watch where they go artistically, intellectually, aesthetically, spiritually, financially, all of that. This is the time to get on the ride with an artist. There's a lot of energy in the room tonight. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you very, Thank very you, much. Thank you, Jeff. We're, we're, I'm very proud to be here yeah. and uh, very proud of my association with Paul. Good deal. And uh, thanks. Come on and see the work. It's great. We love it. <laughs> and I just want to say, having Buzz TV in the house, it really adds to the buzz. Because when you're trying to create an atmosphere for an art-related event, and we have things on the wall that are you know, 20, 30,000, you want people feeling good. And when they see this camera and they see this, it's like, wow, this is a real event. And you see people get a little more turned on. It ups, it ups the temperature in the room, I think.